Okay, so Cool Cat Ukes today, we've got, um, well, I'm going to introduce you to uh, a young man called Matthew Quilliam, and um, met him at uh, Unplug the Wood. He came along and absolutely amazed us. So I thought I'd get him along, because I think you're going to see a lot more of him in the future, and um, get him along and ask a few questions. So, Matthew, welcome. Thank and um, first question, obviously, how long have you been playing ukulele? What, what got you into it? I could say five years, I could say six, depending on when you start say is the starting point, because I was at school, and they had this program called Listen to Me with the Hampshire Music Service, where they um, every half term or term you learn a different instrument, oh. and there was brass, violin, and ukulele, and I liked it. And they were it was the first time they were doing ukulele, and so they were trying out a new club, and I thought I'd go along to that, but that wasn't until the following year, so you could say I started playing it in those school lessons, but it wasn't really me playing ukulele until I had my own the following year when I started properly learning it so five or six years you obviously depends. didn't learn that at school the way you play that's no no <laughs> simple chords yeah okay so um, I see you've brought a signed yes uh, signed uke with you what's what's the story about all of that um to be honest it isn't very interesting I <laughs> it's one of those DIY ukulele kits right um I just put everything together uh, and then painted it green, obviously, and then got friends at school to sign it. Okay. Um, it's a nice memento. Yeah, yeah, and it's got teachers and things. Um, I had a few problems with building it, actually, because the fretboard was a concert fretboard up to the fifth fret, and then the rest of the frets were just all over the place beyond that. Uh, and it was too wide, and it was a horrible wood, so we had to get a new one. <laughs> Uh, and these tuners aren't very nice. I do not like these backward style tuners. Okay. And so it's very fiddly to um, tune up. So I kind of really just have it as a display model. Mm -hmm. uh, it's green because I like trains and my favourite railway company. I used all the <laughs> trains green. It was the wrong shade of green, but it's green, so it's fine. And as I say, it's just permanent marker with um, yeah. people's names on. I was wondering if you'd sign it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh dear. That's the first one I've ever signed. Wow. <laughs> so I can't write anything clever, but I'll write Cool Cat Ukes. That's fine. Cool. Thank you. And the but the main thing actually was the other sign duke you've got. So there's a bit of a story behind that. I understand. Oh yes, the, well, the uh, banjo lady. Yeah, the banjo duke. I picked this up. We went to Southern Ukulele Store right. in um, in Bournemouth. Yeah, and I know well. we uh, I was wanted a new sound, and we started bar I started playing baritone. We got my baritone there, and we walked around the corner and saw this. It's seventy years old. Dallas C ukulele signed by Ted Formby, okay. Ted Formby's brother. Um, I can't read who it's for. <laughs> it says to somebody, best wishes, Ted Formby. Okay, wow. And um, yeah, that was awesome. And it was only um, it wasn't very expensive for one of these old time banjo ukes, and so I just had to have it. But you can probably guess that George himself's probably had a bit of a go on it, maybe. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Because Dallas C, sorry Dallas, the company, they um, got George Formby to endorse their ukuleles. Okay. It was this kind of sponsorship thing, and they put his head on the um, headstock of all their ukuleles. Right. So, which is why his okay. name is on the headstock. So uh, I don't know if George has actually played this one, but at least Ted Formby has signed it. <laughs> That's cool. But so you're obviously a fan, um, mm. and but I assume. And I pretty much know you're not just a George Formby no. tribute act. Yeah, that'd be a bit cliche maybe. But uh, what what other ukes and styles do you? Uh, have? This is I have nine ukuleles in total, and I only have two banjo ukes. Right. Um, this being one of them, obviously. Uh, my main style, I think there's a difference between being a musician and being an entertainer. Mm -hmm. And I would like to think that I'm an entertainer yeah. who plays ukulele because I play either other silly songs from other people or I'll take the mick out of songs or I'll play those songs which are just 
weird ones that people can just laugh at yeah. and things. And I'll go to pubs and stuff and play them. And you know, I get a good audience and they all enjoy it and they laugh and have fun with them. Well, have fun listening to it and all. And then I'm also into the um, the fast, fancy playing. Yeah. And I do a bit of Rory Smack and things. But that never gets a chance to come out really because that isn't entertaining for an audience in a pub. You know, you just want some, a it's singer. More, that's to, more of the musical mm, technique, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, the gigs and stuff I do, it, that doesn't really fit. Okay. So that, that hardly gets a chance to come out, which is a shame because uh, that's obviously a, uh, a completely different side to ukulele, which I would like to bring out. Yeah. But as I say, it's more about what an audience will listen to, I think, than what a, um, than just what you want to play. Interesting. So you mentioned Roy Smack. Mm -hmm. But what current ukulele players do you admire and, and why? Uh, a bit cliche, Andy Eastwood. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Because um, you know, obviously the George Formby yeah. thing. Um, he'll, he'll be he'll be pleased with that. <laughs> I like uh, Jake Shima Bakuru. Yeah. Because of all the uh, the fancy stuff and he's just incredible everything he does. Uh, I like Aldri Aldream. Yeah. Where Rero. Yeah, good try. I'm not going to do it. Apologies if I forgot to do that. Um, because even though he isn't very technical and fast, or as, at least as technical as other players, yeah. I think his style is more relaxing, and yeah. sometimes that's just what you want. He's you want a nice, proper entertainer. Yeah, as well. he wants a nice. You, so you want a nice sound to listen to, as opposed to all this fancy stuff, which is kind of a bit distracting for the ear. So have you met one of those guys? Um, I've only ever met. Uh, uh, Aldrin at the okay. Grand Southern Uke Fest, yeah. and I also admire the Ukulele Orchestra of Great Britain as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, Will Grove White's mm, my, I've seen my your top top yeah. man there. I think it's, uh, anyway. So we've seen you a few times at Unplug the Wood, but uh, what's your what's your biggest gig so far? Um, big gigs to me would be different to big gigs to say an audience because mm -hmm. for me it's all about audience enjoyment and participation and everything and I tend to get that more at the smaller gigs I went to a birthday party recently and played for about 40 minutes and they had a great time mm -hmm. but there are only about 20 30 of them okay whereas I went to a, um, a sort of picnic at the park thing in Santa Camberley mm -hmm. uh, to celebrate the Queen's 90th and it was a huge field there were a couple hundred people there and I only had about two listening to me it wasn't very fun and <laughs> yeah, I was just yeah, kind of yeah. there um, yeah. uh, so that would be a big gig in terms of size but it wasn't for me very big and enjoyable that's, that's fulfilling yeah but I have got some big stuff coming up I'm um, playing at the Fringe Festival on the Isle of Wight okay. Ukulele Festival 10.30 <laughs> um, and then I've got a lot of uh, I've won a competition Berkshire's Got Talent and yeah. I'm playing in a pub on the 30th of July uh, and I've got loads of people from school and things coming to see me okay. so the pressure's on for that as well I'm sure you'll be spotted when you're at the Isle of Wight and I know there's some other people looking at you mm -hmm. as well saying yeah. and I'm going to hopefully meet Andy Eastwood there good I'm sure you will I'm sure yeah, you will I'm doing his yeah. workshops so so you, you, I've seen you before. You seem to be a master of the split strum. I, I'm, you. I'm fingers and thumbs. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to try. Um, <clears throat> I'll try offline. I'm not going to try it on video <laughs> here. Um, but could you, in sixty seconds, that's the challenge. Okay. Um, I'm not going to time you, but sixty oh, okay. seconds. Can you show us how you do the split strum? Okay. I know there's loads of people just totally. Don't right. Understand. So um, with the right hand, you've got to hold your hand like that. Okay. It's a bit awkward to show on camera, okay. but you arch your finger and then put your thumb on the f top crease. Right. Uh, and then you strike down with your nail and up with the flesh. Right. Uh, you strum down, then you make an upward motion, but you only hit the bottom string. Then you go to the top and hit the top string as a downward motion. And then you do that again. And then to round it off, you go down, up. So it's down, bottom, top, down, bottom, top, down, up. Okay. over and over again. With the left hand, when you're plucking this string on your way up, you uh, that string has to be open, but for all the other movements you make, that s string has a finger on it. So if you see, you take it off for when you're plucking, the making the melody sound. So I've got to coordinate two hands? Yes. Oh, well. And then you just do that over and over again <laughs> to get... 
Oh, it looks so easy. Okay, it's very hard to practice. <laughs> so, what, what's your, what's your ambitions then, Matthew? Where do you want to be in five years' time? Let's say. I would like to be a recognisable name, not perhaps big, you know, Hollywood type thing. Oh, because no. I think that's a bit of a step too high, and I'm not very. I'm not. I'm. A, I'm not as original or unique um, to be that big you know there are other people who do what I do but you know they're few and far between and also I think if you set your goals too high there's further to fall if you don't get them yeah, yeah. but I would like to be recognised you know it would be nice to perhaps be uh, a big player at the ukulele festivals before they disappear and then um, <laughs> or at least just a um, if they disappear come on I think they will <laughs> to be honest there's a lot of them I must admit yeah and I think people will get bored of them in a few years time yeah there's, but, uh, but there's, hopefully not. There's a couple of big ones that I think yeah, are going to yeah, still things. around. Yeah. Uh, so I'd quite like to play at those, um, and then maybe just be, you know, have a Facebook page that's followed by several people. You know, it's nothing too big, but something that gets gets me a name. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure you'll be a name if you're you. if you're up for it. I'm yeah, sure. Definitely. I'm sure there's not much much issue with that. Okay, so. Final question, really. How many cats have you got? And have you got any songs about cats? Uh, we have no cats because okay. there's a member of my family who's allergic to them. <laughs> so we then were going to get a dog, but then there's another member of our family who's allergic to them. Oh, no. So then we got guinea pigs, only to discover that I was allergic oh, to them. Oh, wow. We can't win. <laughs> so, um, uh, so, so we've only got the one guinea pig now, the other one sadly passed away. <laughs> and I don't really have a song about cats. Okay. Um, other than while I pinched off the Mother Uckers because I thought it sounded nice, the Love Cat song. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I can't do it with that high pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff. Well, is there something you can give us a quick burst of now? Can't let you go without playing something. Uh, um, what, cat released or anything? No, no, anything, anything. Okay, um. So thanks for coming along Matthew. Thank you for having uh, me. And uh, look forward to seeing more of you around the ukulele circuit. Cheers. <laughs>